At this time, Your Honor, I would like to submit new evidence just placed in my hands that would prove only the defendant could have been present when Damien Smith was murdered. Your Honor, I object. already listed in Discovery. It's an audio tape in use that night on the Ward House answering machine. Then what's new about it? I thought that tape was unusable. A lab in Virginia was able to restore a few brief but critical portions of the incoming messages received. And I have an expert witness here who is prepared to identify the voices for the jury. Not until I've had a chance to hear it. I have transcripts and tapes for both of you. Relevance, counsel? It narrows the time of the death of Damien Smith to approximately a 10-minute window. Court will recess while we review the people's new submission in chambers. All rise. What could they possibly have? Nothing, baby. Just relax. I'm sure they're blowing smoke. So, oh, Mr. Riedel, that second voice we heard, that's an electronic function on the Ward House answering machine, correct? Yes, a voice synthesized time stamp which follows each message with the time of the call. And were you able to identify the caller's voice? Yes, it was Damien Smith's. I compared it to the outgoing message on his own answering machine and to a videotaped interview. That his I... interview with Ms. Bowles? With the reporter, yes. Mm -hmm. And the voice prints matched exactly. So, based on your testimony, we know that as of 10.04, Damien Smith was still alive. That's correct. And from the medical examiner's testimony, we know that he ceased to draw breath at least five minutes before the fire was reported at 10.18. Whom was Mr. Smith looking for? Was he returning someone's call? Was he making sure the ward house was empty so that he could burn it down? These speculations do not concern us. Only two things do. That unknown to Mr. Smith, someone was there. The defendant. Like How's it going? It would appear there's no end to Laura Spencer's villainy. Now she's being accused of not answering the phone. What? Nothing. How can you be so awfully sure that this is a miscarriage of justice? Do you think she did it? No, but I don't know why you don't. Laura, honey, it's me, Cora. I guess you're busy. Call me at the hotel when you turn. Bye bye. Call number two, ten, twelve p.m. Yes, thank you. So, ten, twelve. Squarely in the interval, we've established as the probable time of Damien Smith's death. Objection, Your Honor. She's editorializing again. Sustained. Move on, Miss Jensen. Okay. Now, the last sound we heard on the tape, could that have possibly been someone picking up the Ward House telephone? No, no, that was the caller hanging up. If someone answered the phone, the timestamp would have been canceled. So we can assume the defendant was otherwise occupied. Objection. Ms. Jensen, you're trying my patience. Sustain. Uh, no further questions. Thank you very much. Mr. Riedel, does the tape give me any indication as to whether or not the ward phone actually rang 
In other words, if the phone had been turned off so as not to disturb a sick child who was sleeping. Objection. Who's testifying, the witness or counsel? Look who's talking. I don't mind it. You may answer. No. The ringer's controlled by a switch on the housing, which after the fire was pretty much just a lump of melted plastic. All right. All right. And let's get back to Miss Jensen's question about background noise on the tapes. During the painstaking process of enhancing them, did you notice any stray noises on the second message that we heard? Screams, shouts of agony, sound of a small woman too busy beating a man to death with a baseball bat to answer the phone. Honor! Uh, no. And that wouldn't be on the tape. Unless this coral was murdering someone. Okay. <laughs> now, let's, uh, let's get to uh, the actual time of these phone calls. Does your home answering machine have a time stamp on it? Objection. Is this relevant? Let's find out. Bring it home, Mr. Ward. Uh, yes, it does. And how do you set the time? Well, there's a, a keypad on the top, and I... You know, actually... Uh, a lot of people never figure it out, I have to say. <laughs> but on your machine, I'm, I'm sure, I mean, you're an expert, so your machine never runs a minute too fast, a minute too slow. Actually, um, we always remember to spring ahead for daylight savings time and then forget to set it back again in the fall. I don't know how many hours off it is by now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. No further questions. Do I have a great lawyer or what? <laughs> I damn well better be. Very well. In view of the time, we'll postpone hearing the defense case until after the weekend. Is that agreeable, Mr. Ward? Yes, Your Honor. Court stands adjourned until 10 a.m. Monday. All rise. Are you heading home? No, I have to see a patient. I've got late rounds. And you better get to it, because these late hours you put in aren't helping to keep domestic peace, I've noticed. Oh, now you're a marriage counselor. Mm -hmm. uh, good job today, counselor. Oh, thank you. Uh, went well. Went well. On the other hand, the annoying mimes down on River Street can get laughs. But it's the quarters in the hat at the end of the day that counts, so what about Monday? Look, if I seem critical, I'm sorry, but you know, we're, we're dealing with my wife here, the mother of my children, the woman that I would kill or die for. So I, I just can't deal well with the uncertainty. Somebody once said that I could have her next to my side until I die, you know, till death do us part. I'm sort of counting on that. You think I don't know that? You think I don't think about that every minute of every day? You want certainty, Luke? Okay, you got it. Laura will not be convicted of this crime. She won't serve one day in prison for it. It's a pretty hefty promise to deliver on Well, I will deliver on it. All I have to give you is my word, but you can count on like you can count on the 4th of July. out the back. Sonny's here. I'll just be a minute seeing what he's up to. What were you just saying to Justice? Oh, just uh, talking about Monday. He seems to think that, you know, everything's going our way. But you don't. Look, lawyers are trained to be optimistic. Husbands are trained to be paranoid. You know me.
looking for, Edward. Thanks. Commissioner. Hey, Luca, I was just on my way out. Uh, then I need you to change your plans. I gotta have your help, Bubba. I gotta have some dinner. Come on, we'll talk on the way to the car. No, it has to be here. How come? This. I need... I need a way to, to take a look at this, and I assume you've got a videotape expert on call? What's on that thing? Well, I don't know. That's what I want to find out. But I assume that it's something that could clear my wife. Well, how'd you get your hands on it? I went fishing. It's waterlogged, but uh, as far as I can tell, it isn't broken. So please, tell me you got somebody who can restore it. Yeah, I'll get somebody on it. Uh, somebody who can keep their mouth shut. My texts don't discuss evidence. Oh, I wouldn't call this evidence, Bubba. <clears throat> well, then what would you call it? Personal property, which I acquired and therefore can do any damn thing that I choose. Look, I would do it myself, but I don't have the equipment or the know-how. And you're asking me to provide it? Well, I'm sorry to have to do that, Commissioner. The last thing I want is to involve you. Sorry, you already did. You have got something that could bag the real murder. I suggest that you don't hold out on me. You'll get to see it, Commissioner, eventually. What do you expect from me, Luke? I mean, if you wanted to keep that thing under wraps, why did you bring it to the police, Commissioner? Why, why didn't you just give it to Laura's lawyer? It's a matter of trust. So... Is it me, or you getting edgy around me? Don't take it personal, counselor. The whole freaking situation makes me edgy, despite the guarantees of the defense counsel. Luke, Laura will go free. I said it, and I meant it. Well, I hope that's not overconfidence. That can make for sloppy work. Well, it looks like you've been doing some work of your own. You didn't expect me to curl up and trust the system, did you? Well, I guess it won't do any good to warn you against digging around. You have a problem with that? <laughs> Only if you don't come to me with whatever you find. Why? So you can turn it over to Edward? The devil does Edward have to do with this? That's what I'd like to know, Justice. Something is going on between you two. Like what? Like maybe you're protecting your old white-haired granddaddy instead of my wife. That's a very bizarre and totally wrong notion. And I suggest you disabuse yourself of it, my friend, because it's not going to do Laura's case any good. If you find something solid, I suggest you let the defense decide what to do with it. Don't worry, I won't do any grandstand plays. When I find the killer, and I will. I'll be knocking on your door. Count on it. Oh, by the way, Justice, do you know a wharf rat named Harper? No. <sighs> yeah, I'm pressed for time. Thank you. Uh, hold on, Counselor. I've got some information for you. Like what? A news flash from Atlantic City, my own private network. It seems a Port Charles thug named Harper, who was recently found floating face down, had some hefty gambling debts. The word is they were paid off by Edward Quartermain. Why, Justice? <laughs> I'm telling you, I don't know a guy named Harper, and I sure don't know what he's got to do with oh, that. Cut the crap. I saw that guy hanging around early this week, hanging around the trial. I saw him talking to your granddaddy. Now, I want to know how that connects to Damien's death. It doesn't. I can assure you of that much. Your assurances are getting pretty old, pal. Luke, I swear to you. Maybe Edward did pay off this guy's gambling debts. I don't know. But if so, it hasn't got a damn thing to do with this case. If it did, I sure as hell would know about it. 